Hello everyone. Welcome back to the VTU eShikshana program's video lecture on applied hydraulics. Myself, Dr. Rishmi Devi, Assistant Professor in the Department of Civil Engineering at BMS College of Engineering, Bangalore. In this video, we are starting module 4 of this course and I will be covering the first part of this module which talk about impact of jet on curved weights. And this is the foundation or the basic knowledge required to understand the performance of hydraulic turbines. At the end of this unit, you will be able to apply impulse momentum principle to estimate the impact of jet on stationary and moving curved veins and the work done by the jet on the weights. Of course, the second part of the unit or the module talks about impulse turbine which will be covered by another expert in the domain. First part of this unit which talks about impact of jet on curved veins starts with an introduction to the concept of jet impact followed by the concept of impulse momentum principle and its application to analyze the impact of jet on stationary and moving curved veins. This is followed by the introduction to the concept of velocity triangles and its application to find the impact of jet on a series of curved veins followed by the numerical problems showing the applications of these concepts. Let me start with an introduction to the concept of fluid jet. All of you must be knowing what a fluid jet is. While watering your plants, you might have played with a garden hose which issues water with very high velocity. This is known as a fluid jet or I can define a fluid jet as a stream of fluid issued from a nozzle with high velocity. So some mass is coming out from the nozzle and it has velocity as well. That is a fluid jet. Because of the mass and the velocity, the fluid jet also possess kinetic energy. If an obstruction, a vein or a plate is kept along the path of this jet. The jet exerts a force on the surface which is known as impact of the jet. That is the force exerted by the jet on an obstruction kept along its path is known as impact of jet. A typical example is this jet of water coming and hitting a surface or the jet of water impinging on a series of curved veins of the Pelton wheel. In all these cases, the jet of water is exerting a force on either on the floor or on the veins. This is a typical example or these are the typical examples of impact of jets. Impact of jet is exerted by the jet of flowing fluid and hence it is considered as hydrodynamic force. Hydrodynamic force is the force exerted by the flowing fluid. Being a hydrodynamic force, this is different from the hydrostatic force which you have studied in fluid mechanics which is purely due to the hydrostatic pressure. In this case, when this jet is coming and hitting a surface, its velocity changes. You know that velocity is a vector quantity which has both magnitude and direction. So when this jet hits the surface, either the magnitude of the velocity changes or the direction changes or both magnitude and direction changes. In any of these cases, there is a change in velocity taking place. Or I can say that there is a change in momentum taking place where momentum is the product of mass and velocity. Therefore, even if we assume that the mass remains constant, there is a change in momentum taking place in all these cases due to the change in velocities. Therefore, we make use of impulse momentum principle to analyze the impact of jet on weights. This impact of jet is made use of in various applications starting from entertainment to industrial applications. As you can see in these, two, these three photographs, the last one shows you a water jet pack where the force exerted by the jet of fluid is used to lift this platform where this man is standing as if he is standing in the air. Or another important area where the impact of jet is made use of is in water cutters 
were a high pressure jet of water of course with the help of some abrasive materials in that is used to cut heavy metals or even concrete blocks to get the very fine shape of the concrete blocks or the heavy metals we make use of the water jet or it can also be used in hydropower generation as i mentioned earlier in this unit we will see the application of impulse momentum principle to evaluate the hydrodynamic force or the impact of jet on stationary and moving curved vanes before i move on to the concept of impulse momentum principle first let me brush up what is mean by an impulsive force impulsive force are impulsive forces are very large in magnitude a huge force but it acts over a very short duration a force of very large magnitude which acts for a very short duration is known as an impulsive force for example when this ball bounces from the surface it hits the floor only for a very short duration and the magnitude of this force help the ball uh, to bounce back similarly when the water hits a surface it hits the surface for a very short duration but the magnitude of the force is significant these are typical examples of impulsive forces which are very large in magnitude but acts over a very short duration because of this the effect of these impulsive forces are determined by uh, analyzing the change in velocity produced by these forces that is when this ball hits the floor it was initially the ball was initially coming in this direction or the direction of velocity was like this when after hitting the floor the ball moved in this direction so a change in the velocity has taken place and this change in velocity is produced by this impulsive force so by analyzing this change in velocity we can calculate the effect of this impulsive force the same thing can be extended to this water jet hitting on the surface we can consider the jet was initially coming in this direction after hitting the floor the velocity has changed into the horizontal directions so by knowing this change in velocities we can calculate the effect of this impulsive force momentum is the product of mass and velocity so when there is a change in velocity momentum also changes in other words effect of this impulsive forces can be determined by knowing the change in momentum that the force produces that is what the impulse momentum principle tells impulse momentum principle states that impulse of a force is given by the change in momentum caused by the force on the body when this force is applied on the body it causes a change in the momentum of the body and the impulse of this force is given by the change in momentum that the force produced that is impulse of the force on the ball is equal to final momentum of the ball after striking the floor minus initial momentum of the ball momentum is the product of mass and velocity therefore final momentum is mass of the ball multiplied by the final velocity after hitting the floor so this is the final momentum of the ball and initial momentum is the mass of the ball multiplied by initial velocity before hitting the floor so this is the initial momentum assuming that the mass is not changing this mass terms can be taken outside that means mass multiplied by final velocity of the ball minus initial velocity of the ball that gives you impulse of the force on the ball that is impulse of the force on the ball is equal to mass of the ball multiplied by 
final velocity of the ball minus initial velocity of the ball. According to the impulse momentum principle, impulse of the force on the ball is given by change in momentum of the ball that is mass multiplied by final velocity minus initial velocity of the ball. If mass is represented by small m and the final velocity after hitting the floor is represented by v1 and initial velocity is represented by v, the change in momentum can be written as mass into v1 minus v or v1 minus v can be represented as dv or change dv is the change in velocity. So, mass into dv is the change in momentum which is the impulse of the force on the ball. Now, I would like to like to take you to Newton's second law of motion which states that the force acting on a body is equal to mass into acceleration where acceleration is the rate of change of velocity that is n into dv by dt where acceleration is dv by dt that is rate of change of velocity. Therefore, the force is mass into dv by dt where mass into dv we have just mentioned here that mass into dv is the change in momentum. So, mass into dv by dt is the rate of change of momentum. So, the force is given by the rate of change of momentum. Now, let us see how this can be applied to analyze the impact of jet. In this case, you can see a jet of water coming out from a nozzle and a stationary smooth frictionless vein is held normal to the direction of the jet. The vein is stationary and it is smooth and frictionless and it is held normal to the axis of the jet. The jet on impinging the vein split gets split into two and flows out tangentially. It glides over the vein and flows out tangentially which means that the stationary vein blocks the forward movement of the jet. Therefore, the jet exerts a force on the vein. Also, when the velocity of the jet changes, it was initially along this horizontal x direction or it was initially perpendicular to the vein and after hitting the vein, the jet goes out tangential to the vein, which means that the vein deflects the jet through 90 degrees. That means there is a change in the velocity taking place. We assume the vein to be smooth and frictionless. That means the jet on hitting the vein smoothly glides over the vein. That means the velocity with which the jet is hitting the vein is the same as the velocity with which the jet is leaving the vein or the incoming velocity and the outgoing velocities are the same. Though the magnitude of the velocity remains the same, the direction has changed. That means the velocity has changed. When the velocity has changed, there is a change in momentum taking place. Therefore, the force exerted by this vein on the jet is given by the change in momentum produced on the jet or how much momentum has changed for this jet that is equal to the force exerted by the vein on the jet. That is by impulse momentum principle, the impulsive force is given by the rate of change of momentum uh, caused to the jet. Momentum is mass into velocity. If I write V1 as the final velocity of the jet after the impact and V as the initial velocity of the jet coming out from the nozzle mass into v1 is the final momentum and mass into v is the initial momentum. So, mv1 minus mv divided by dt is the rate of change of momentum. Assuming that mass remains constant, I can take mass m outside the bracket. So, m by dt into v1 minus v or mass flow rate multiplied by change in velocity. This gives you the impulsive force exerted by the vein on the jet. Let us see this in more detail. Impulsive force on the jet by the vein is given by m by dt into v1 minus v 
where m by dt is the mass flow rate that is the rate at which the mass is flowing we know that the mass is given by mass is equal to mass density multiplied by the volume mass is equal to mass density rho multiplied by the volume that is flowing therefore mass flow rate can be written as mass by dt can be written as rho into volume divided by dt where we can see this volume by dt is the volume flow rate which is nothing but the discharge therefore this can be written as mass density rho multiplied by the volume flow rate or the discharge q therefore the mass flow rate can be written as mass density rho multiplied by the volume flow rate or the discharge q that is rho into q for a jet of diameter d or cross sectional area a and if the stream of uh, fluid is coming out with a velocity v the discharge q is given by area into velocity where a is the cross sectional area of the jet and v is the velocity of the jet so area into velocity gives you the discharge therefore the mass flow rate m by dt can be written as mass density rho multiplied by cross sectional area of the jet a multiplied by the velocity of the jet v substituting for the mass flow rate as rho av the force exerted by the vane on the jet is given by rho av into v1 minus v where rho is the mass density of the fluid a is the cross sectional area of the jet v is the velocity of the jet before striking the vane and v1 is the velocity with which the jet is leaving the vane so this is the force exerted by the vane on the fluid so that is the force which is acting in the negative x direction this force is acting in this direction so we mark it as minus f mm, because the normal practice is the direction or the axis of the jet or the direction of the jet is taken as the positive x direction and the perpendicular one is taken as the y direction since this force exerted by the vane on the jet is in the negative x direction we write it as minus f according to newton's third law of motion if the vane exert a force on the jet minus f the jet exert an equal and opposite force on the vane therefore the force exerted by the jet on the vane which is marked as f that force is in the positive x direction that force is in this direction this is the force exerted by the jet on the vane that f is given by negative of this one that is rho av into v minus v1 mass flow rate into initial velocity minus final velocity so the impulsive force exerted by the jet on the vane is given by rho av into v minus v1 where v is the initial velocity of the jet and v1 is the velocity of the jet after striking the vane thus the force exerted by the jet on the vane the vane is smooth and frictionless and it is held normal to the axis of the jet and the vane is stationary so force exerted by this jet of fluid on the vane is given by f is equal to rho av into v minus v1 where v is the initial velocity of the jet v1 is the velocity with which the jet is leaving the vane so this equation can be extended to all directions because we know that force is a vector quantity so if this is the expression for force this can be extended to x or y or any other direction so let us first consider the x direction along the x direction the force along the x direction fx is given by rate of change of momentum in the x direction that is rho av into v minus v1 in the x direction so we need to see what is the initial velocity along the x direction what is the final velocity along the x direction so when this jet is originally in the x direction because x axis is taken as the direction of the jet initial velocity along the x direction is v itself since the vane blocks the forward movement of the jet after striking the vane there is no velocity along the x direction therefore final velocity or v1 
along the x direction is 0. Substituting that fx is given by rho a v into initial velocity that is v and v 1 is now 0. So, this is reduced to fx is equal to rho a v square where rho is the mass density of the fluid, a is the cross sectional area of the jet and v is the velocity of the jet. In this case you need to remember that when the vane is smooth and frictionless, the velocity of the incoming jet is the same as the velocity of the outgoing jet though the jet gets split into two. That means along the y direction if you consider when the jet is leaving the vane, these two outgoing velo velocities are of magnitude v itself. Now, let us apply this equation or extend this equation to the y direction. So, force along the y direction is given by f y is equal to rate of change of momentum in the y direction that is mass flow rate that is rho a v into change in velocity v minus v 1 along the y direction. The original jet is purely along the x direction that is initial velocity v is along the x direction it has no components along the y direction. Therefore, initial velocity along the y direction is 0 that is v is now reduced to 0. What is the final velocity along the y direction? The jet after impinging the vane is split into two. One component is going in this direction along the positive y direction with the velocity v, another component is going in the negative y direction with the velocity v. So, the net velocity along the y direction if you consider it is v minus this v plus v along the positive y direction and minus v along the negative y direction which is v minus v which is also now reduced to 0. Therefore, the total force along the y direction is 0 in this case or I can say that the force exerted by a jet on a smooth frictionless flat wing held normal to the jet is given by the force when I say the force can be resolved into components along the x and y direction along the x direction the force is equal to rho a v square along the y direction the force f y is equal to 0 where rho is the mass density of the fluid a is the cross sectional area of the jet v is the velocity of the jet. Just to summarize what we have learned in this video is a, when a jet of water is coming out with a very high velocity and if an obstruction is kept along the path of the jet, the jet exerts a force on the obstruction and this force exerted by the jet of fluid is known as impact of jet. It is a hydrodynamic force which involves change in velocity and hence this can be analyzed by using impulse momentum principle. When impulse momentum principle is applied to the impact of jet, we have seen that impulse of a force is given by the change in momentum caused by the force on the body or impulsive force is given by the rate of change of momentum. We will continue this discussion in the next lecture. Thank you.